This is Twit. Have you looked into the uh, early history of community band, pre-technology history of community? I wonder, you know, we think of modern communities as fractious and right. uh, and, and the, that we talk about the tragedy of the commons. Right. Is that historically the same, or is were all these early pre-internet communities just jolly old fun? Well, I think the uh, the because the older communities were in person by definition. So you could get punched in the nose. You if know, you were yeah. Really I mean, frankly, there is there is a level of accountability that's yeah. removed from an online setting, yeah. and that's why designing an online environment is so critical. Right, and a good example of this is human beings tend to mimic each other, right? So if you have a terrible leader in your community or in your government or in elsewhere, you will tend to get negative behavior. If you have a really good leader, you'll get positive behavior. So the way in which you wire up your community in terms of the norms and the expectations and rewarding good behavioral outcomes is one piece, but then how do people mimic the leadership that they see there. That's it's, what leadership means. Exactly. It's it's there's so much psychology wrapped up in this, which is one of the reasons why I find it so fascinating. Yeah. Is that when you marry together that psychology, the right kind of psychology with the right kind of workflow, you can you can end up getting this kind of collaboration that can really expand. And importantly for me is it it, it develops a real sense of meaningful engagement which can build retention for a long time. The th the first thing I write about in that book is uh, this kid called Abiyomi who was in the Ubuntu community, I've been in Ubuntu for about six months at this point. Ubuntu is the <coughs> best known kind of commercial version of right. Linux. Right, exactly. And I got an email from him and he told me that he lived in rural Africa and he'd spend his week basically doing chores around his village and earn a bit of money. And then he'd walk two hours to his local town where he would buy an hour's worth of internet access. He'd contribute to Ubuntu and then he'd walk home again. Oh my God. And so to him, he was locally he was just a kid in a village living with his parents and he had a community right a real community right exactly he had his community in his village that he cared about and then there was this community online that he cared about and um but when he was in that moment for that hour he was part of a of, wow. a, of a movement and this is one of the reasons why you've seen a lot of acti activists forming and why we're seeing you know companies getting behind this as well like salesforce a million plus members we've seen kubernetes 2000 developers working on that there's all kinds of examples i think people realize that in any enterprise if you could build a community of customers right that's hugely powerful <clears throat> they become your advocates they become your exactly your best representatives but we've also seen, and I think, you know, maybe when you and I talked about the art of community, we hadn't yet seen how, how bad it could get right. on places like Twitter. Right. And uh, I think we, in the early days of uh, online communities, we were all very optimistic about it. Right. And uh, maybe... Uh, you see, the thing is, I wouldn't describe Twitter as a community. Oh, okay. And the reason why I say that is, to me, a community is a group of people in a shared social context, right? So if you have, for example, um, you know, the people who are hanging out in your- in, Our in chat rooms are community. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There'll be a lot of the same people who show up here yep. every day yep. or to watch them. We all get shows. to know one another. You get to know one another and there is accountability attached to that reputation. Yes, that's right. Now on Twitter- There's no, no accountability. There is individual accountability for the specific person but there are no norms necessarily within that group. And that's why you get radically different ways of engaging on there. So it's, if, it's really true. I think people try to form communities on Twitter, right. but there's nothing to stop drive-bys. Right. And so there's always people driving by and throwing things out the window exactly. at your little community. It makes it very hard. Because there isn't- there There's isn't, no norm. There's no norm and there is no accountability or social hit. So right. for example, if you join a typical open source community and you participate and you do great work and you, and you know, gradually your reputation will grow because of that, because you've been an active participant in your community. But, you know, uh, it's unlikely when you start building that reputation that you're going to just throw it away um, by being antisocial.